Hello learners and welcome back to my channel. Today we are diving into one of the most famous works in English literature that is the Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer. So let's just go back in time and explore this fascinating story and the characters of this classic. Let's start with the very basics, some important facts. Now Chaucer originally wanted to write 120 stories, imagine that, 120 stories, but unfortunately he passed away before he could complete his ambitious project and that is why today we just have 24 tales, 24 tales out of 120 which he had originally planned to write and that's even then quite impressive. Now, Canterbury Tales, this is framed around a storytelling contest, a storytelling competition. And who are the contestants here? So we have this group of 30 pilgrims and these 30 pilgrims, they are traveling from London to Canterbury, right? They are on their way to visit the shrine of Thomas Beckett, St. Thomas Beckett, who was this revered martyr. Now, all these details that I'm telling you right now, remember, they are very, very important for the exam. In fact, all these things, you know, they have been asked in the exam before. So make sure that as you are watching this video, you have your pen and paper with you and you are noting all these details down side by side because exam mein bohat baar pooch chuke hain and Canterbury Tales is a very important work for the paper as well. Now, moving on, we have these 30 travelers who include 29 pilgrims and these pilgrims they are from different walks of life plus there is one narrator and this narrator is Chaucer himself right now each pilgrim represents a different segment of the society and that actually gives you a colorful tapestry of medieval life it's like you know you have this diverse group of people you know perhaps maybe your classmates or colleagues or even your family now you just need to imagine that how each person would tell a story and how their experiences their lives their backgrounds they are going to share their tales okay so this is exactly what Chaucer did but with pilgrims in the 14th century so you get to see the life that was like during that time another reason this work is so famous and important now as these pilgrims uh, they make their way to Canterbury and back they engage in a storytelling contest to pass the time each pilgrim is supposed to tell two tales on the way to Canterbury and two on the way back. Do jate time, do aate time batayenge. 30 pilgrims, 30 into 4 makes 120, the original plan, right? So, four tales per person. So, with 30 pilgrims, this adds up to 120 stories. Keep that maths in mind. Now, Sadly, like I told you, that Chaucer was not able to complete all these 20, 120 stories before he died. So he just managed to write about 24 stories. But these are enough to give you a rich glimpse into the medieval society of those times. Like, you know, the uh, how society was during that time. That really does a very good job at that. This work, the Canterbury Tales. Now, what makes this work, Canterbury Tales, so special is not just the story stories themselves but also the characters telling them so you have all the plethora of characters from a knight to a miller from a prioress to a merchant each character brings their own unique perspective and background to their tale this diversity is what makes this work so engaging and reflective of the society of that time okay that's the reason that it's important that it gives you that insight into the lives the thoughts and the values of people from different social classes during Chaucer's time. I'll now talk about the four most important tales from Canterbury Tales. There are 24 tales like we said but then hum yaha par sirf char jo bohat bohat important tales hai. We'll talk about only those super important from the exam viewpoint. Do not miss these and like I said keep your pen and paper ready. First tale, Knight's Tale. Okay. So we start from the Knight's Tale. This is a fascinating tale that's filled with adventure, with romance and a touch of tragedy. We'll start with that with a very basic couple of points that you need to remember from the Knight's Tale. And I already have a separate video on the Knight's Tale actually. If you want that, you can watch that as well. Now, it's the very first tale in the Canterbury Tales. Remember that. Second, it's a high romance that's told in heroic couplets. You have to remember these details. All of them have been asked in the UGC net paper before. Now, let's start with the story. Now, the ninth tale that actually revolves around two friends. So, we have Archite and Palamon. These two, these 
two people archite and palamon they are, these are the best of friends they are sworn brothers and they are also knights now they find themselves in the city of athens which is in greece now here they are captured and they are imprisoned by the duke of athens the name of the duke of athens is theseus right so while they are imprisoned archite and palamon you know they are in that prison tower and they look out and they just see a beautiful woman they just are looking out one day they see a beautiful woman her name is emily and both of them they fall in love with her at first sight pehli nazar ka pyar and this sparks a rivalry between the once inseparable friends now the tension is high because both of them they want emily's love now deciding you know they decide that just there is only one way that we have to have a battle which can settle that who will win emily's hand so the two knights they manage to escape from the prison and they engage in a fierce battle and it is archite who ultimately wins okay but then there is a twist of fate what happens here that just as archite is victorious divine intervention there is divine intervention and uh, he as an archite he falls from his horse and that leads to his untimely death okay and in the end we have palamon who is the one who ends up marrying emily the beautiful emily and that brings the tale to a dramatic and somewhat you can say bitter sweet conclusion as well so like i said i have a separate video on that where i tell this in much more detail do watch that coming to the next tale we have the wife of bard's tale again a very important tale for the paper as well and a very interesting one at that now this story is not just about a knight from king arthur's court it's also about some thought provoking questions raised by the wife of bath herself in her prologue in fact you know wife of bath's prologue is longer than her tale which shows that she's a very talkative woman now before we get into the tale let's talk about the prologue where the wife of bath she brings up three significant questions highly important questions first she shares her experiences with her five husbands uske panch husbands reh chuke hain and how each one treated her so she gives you a peek into her life and relationships and she shows you the ups and downs of marriage from her perspective okay that's the first thing the second thing is the next thing is that she delves into her views on marrying multiple times imagine it's 14th century or us time pe panch shaadiyan right so she's sharing those views she's pondering whether it's acceptable to have several marriages and very cleverly she backs up her thoughts with examples from the bible like king solomon who had many wives to uski bahut sari biwi aati so what if i marry multiple times it's a fascinating discussion that makes you think about societal norms and personal choices the third question that she addresses is about virginity now she debates where whether virginity is essential to being a true woman this is something which is highly relevant even till today right especially in a society like india this again is a very powerful topic why because it challenges challenges this traditional views on purity and womanhood the wife of bath's insights they are very bold and ahead of her time and that sparks conversations which are relevant even up till today and now let's start with her tale the wife of bath's tale now this story you know it has twists and it raises these fascinating questions about power and relationships so our tale starts we know uh, we know we have a knight in king arthur's court who has committed a very terrible crime what is he has raped a young maiden now as punishment he faces death but the queen she steps in and she offers him a way out so she gives him a year and she gives him one year and a day to find the answer to a crucial question what's the question that what do women want the most the knight goes on his quest and he asks countless people but he never gets a satisfying answer now the time is running out and he's going desperate because zindagi aur maut ka sawal hai if he does not find he'll hang now finally he meets this old woman who promises that see i will give you the correct answer but then i have one condition what's the condition that you will agree to do whatever i say in return theek hai now he has no other option so the knight agrees now the old woman tells him the answer what's the answer that what women want most is control over their lovers and husbands and also sovereignty over their own lives and the in, uh, and the ability to make their own choices now he has this answer the knight he has this answer he returns to the queen's court and the queen is 
pleased with his answer. She is happy with his answer. So she lets him go. She spares his life. Now the knight must fulfill his promise to the old woman that whatever she says, he has to agree. So she demands that you will have to marry me. Now the knight is horrified, okay, that, oh my God, what has she asked? So he's horrified, but he reluctantly agrees. Now on their wedding night, the old woman offers him a choice. She says that, see, I can either remain old and faithful or I can become young and beautiful, but potentially unfaithful. Now the knight, understanding the lesson from his quest, tells her, see, the choice is yours to make. Jaisa tum bolo, okay? The choice is yours. Very clever, okay? Now, delighted by his response, the old woman, she transforms into this beautiful young lady who promises to be both beautiful and faithful. Okay, so I will be beautiful and I will also be faithful. So, the knight is rewarded for his understanding and respect and they live happily ever after. Now, this tale from the wife of Bath is not just a story, it's a lesson. It's a lesson about respecting the autonomy of others and recognizing the importance of choice in relationships. Okay, this is what it tells you as well. Moving on to the third tale, we have the Prioress's tale. Now, this in itself, this story is quite intense and it offers a powerful message about faith and miracles. Now, before diving into the tale, let's talk a bit about the Prioress herself. Now, she's the head of a group of nuns and Chaucer describes her as wearing a brooch and that brooch is inscribed with the words love conquers all. Again, okay? something you need to remember as well. They have asked this in the papers before. Now, the prologue to her tale, that includes a heartfelt prayer to the Virgin Mary and that sets the stage for the story that follows, okay? Now, the prioress's tale that starts and that starts with the description of a young Christian boy who lives in a Jewish neighborhood. Okay. Now, in the context of the tale, in the context of this particular prioress's tale, okay, the Jews are depicted as hostile towards the Christians. Now, every day, this little boy, he walks to school and he sings a Christian hymn called Alma Redemptoris. Okay, that's the name of the hymn that he sings. Now, this angers the local Jews and they decide that they are going to kill this boy. So, they murder the boy and throw his body into a sewage ditch. The boy's mother she is distraught and she is searching for her missing son when she finds the body of the boy that is now lifeless she is overcome with grief in her sorrow you know she prays to the virgin mary and she starts to sing alma redemptoris now miraculously the dead boy also starts to sing along with her despite his fatal wound okay now the mother realizes that this miracle is due to the virgin mary's blessing as mary had placed a miraculous seed on the boy's tongue allowing him to sing even after death the story ends with the removal of the seed from the boy's tongue. That seed is removed from the boy's tongue and his soul ascends to heaven. The Prioress's Tale is a striking example of medieval storytelling that blends faith, miracle and a strong moral message, right? Coming to the last tale from the Canterbury Tales, as in the last important tale from the Canterbury Tales, we have the Nun's Priest's Tale. It's a very important one, a very famous one, and it's one of these delightful tales from the Canterbury Tales. This uh, is a story, you know, which also has a moral message and it has been loved for centuries for this moral lesson as well. And that lesson, you know, it remains timeless, something that we all can learn from. Now, imagine this picturesque countryside early in the morning where the sun is just starting to rise. Okay. Now, there you have this little farmyard and in that farmyard, you have a rooster, a proud rooster who lives and his name is Chanticleer. That's the pronunciation, okay? Chanticleer. Now, Chanticleer is not just any rooster. He is known for his magnificent crowing that could rival even the sweetest songs. His feathers, they gleam in the sunlight and he struts around like the, like, you know, he owns the place. That's how he walks around, okay? Jaise wo own karta ho place ko. But one night, Chanticleer, he has a terrifying dream. He dreams of being caught and eaten by a sly fox, by a clever fox. The dream leaves him shaken. And as he wakes up the next day, this Chanticleer, he just cannot shake off the feeling of dread, that bad feeling that he has. Now, here's where it gets interesting. 
Now Chanticleer, he goes about his day and eventually he wanders into a field. And guess who he encounters there? That's right. There is a cunning fox who has been eyeing him for a meal. Jo usko khana chata hai. The fox, knowing how to play his cards, cards you know, uh, he starts to shower uh, Chanticleer with flattery. He praises Chanticleer's singing voice and saying, Oh, Chanticleer, your crowing is so beautiful. I've never heard anything like it. Could you sing for me? Now, Chanticleer, he's flattered and he feels quite proud. So, what he does is that, you know, he just closes his eyes and he starts to crow, completely falling into the fox's trap. That's exactly what he wanted him to do. Now, in that instant, the fox grabs Chanticleer by the neck and starts to run away with him. But Chanticleer is also very clever, okay? So, as they are running, what Chanticleer does is that he also thinks very quickly. So, quick thinking he displays and he decides to turn the tables. Now, he says to the fox, you've caught me so skillfully, I'm amazed. Could you tell me how you managed to come up with such a brilliant plan? Now, the fox is also flattered and he also wants to boast about his cleverness. So, the fox opens his mouth to speak. And the moment the fox does that, the moment he opens his mouth, Chanticleer slips free and he flies to the safety of a nearby tree. Now, what's the moral of the story? Never ever trust a flatterer, okay? Beware of those who use sweet words to deceive you. I mean, is not that a lesson that we all can learn from? It remains timeless, doesn't it? Now, this tale from Chaucer is not just entertaining. It's also a reminder to stay sharp and not let flattery cloud our judgment, right? And if you enjoyed the story and if you want to learn more about the wisdom hidden in the classic tales and all these uh, different works of Chaucer and all these writers who are important for the exam, make sure that you check out my online course where I explore many more fascinating stories by Chaucer, like, you know, all these important texts by Chaucer and other writers. You can also call or WhatsApp me on the given number that's given above and in the description box as well. To not forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And do not forget to press the bell icon as well so that you are notified each time I upload a new video. With that, I'll take your leave. See you soon. Till the time, take care.